Everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about transformation of functions. We have four common functions here. y equal to x squared, or f of x equal to x squared. That's the quadratic function. y equal to x cubed, the cubic function. y equal to the absolute value of x, the absolute value function. And y equal to the square root of x, which is the square root function. Okay? And I've drawn four sketches, rough sketches, of what these graphs look like. And notice that the absolute value function actually makes a V, so value starts with V. That may help you remember that. When we talk about the transformation of these functions, uh, what makes them shift up and down or left and right, etc. So I'm going to start. Let's start with the up and down or vertical shifts. All right. So let's say I've got x squared plus 1. Everyone, that's going to make that function that you just saw shift one upward. All right, x cubed minus one. I'll shift one unit downward. Let's see, I'll take this. How about plus two? Notice I'm putting this outside those bars. That'll shift up two units. And over here, I'll put minus two. This would shift down two units. I'm going to draw these. Just rough sketches. Yeah. One like that. I want to even put the arrows on there. Down one. So that little. Let's go up two. This one will go down two. This is a slow rising curve, this square root function. All right, that's vertical shifts. Yeah, add a value or subtract a value, is it up and downward? Notice this was outside the bars, this was outside that radical. Let's talk about horizontal shifts, left and right. All right, so I'm going to go on here. What makes these graphs shift? left or right. Notice the difference. What I just wrote in comparison to what I had before. See these parentheses? I'll put x minus 1 cubed. I'll put everything inside the bars. Absolute value bar. x plus 2. The square root of, look at this long bar, x minus 2. Everything's inside that radical. Now we're talking about horizontal shifts, left and right shifts. Some students mistakenly think, ah, plus 1 is going to go to the right, and up to the bottom values and shift to the right. Uh-uh. What x value, substitute here, makes this turn into a 0? Isn't it negative 1? Negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. So this graph actually will shift one unit to the left. It'll be over here to the left. I mean, these are just rough sketches. This will go one unit to the left. All right? So left one. How come? Well, negative one plus one actually equals zero. And notice that's the location where it shifted to at x equal to negative one. So uh, how about this one? Yeah, it's going to move in the opposite direction. <laughs> it's going to move right one. It's going to shift right one unit. Then it's going to do that cubic model. So it's going to go... And so it will shift. Transform. Uh, how come? Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. And that's where it's located, 1. This one. Okay, it's a plus 2. Yeah, follow the pattern. This will go left 2. Over here. I mean, that makes the V, the absolute blah, 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 value, V. And this one, right to. Yeah, square root function. Shoot off to the right like that. Yeah, I guess you could say every time I had this plus inside here, it went left. If I had a minus, it shifted to the right. 
But also what helps is you just figure out, you know, what makes this zero? What x value you substitute in there makes it zero? And you can find exactly where it's shifted to. That's left right shifts or horizontal shifts. Now, let's talk about reflections. Yeah. What if I put a negative? front of x squared, or a negative in front of x cubed. A negative one is a coefficient. A negative in front of those absolute value bar. A negative in front of the square root of x. This graph will just reflect on the y-axis. That's what's going to happen. Some say it flips over. <laughs> there it goes. Reflects on the y-axis, flips over. Well, if it was like this and it flips over, has this minus, it's going to be like that. Yeah. It's going to go. Flip that over. Let's do that. And this one, remember we had this before. So it flips over, it's just going to be like that. Reflecting on the y axis. There it goes. So that's what happens when you have that negative one as a coefficient to these four common functions. What about coefficients though? Let's talk about that. Does that make it shift? No. I'll put some numbers in front of you. I'm just gonna actually, I'm gonna concentrate now on the quadratic function, AKA the parabola, okay? Let's just focus on this one. All right. Let's look at two examples. Y equal to one-tenth x squared versus y equal to 10 x squared. Let's just plot a few points here. We'll get a sense of what goes on. So now I just got coefficients. How about just three simple points, everyone? Three simple points. We'll plug in negative one, zero, and one. Plug a negative one in there, negative one squared is positive one. You get one tenth. Plug in a zero, you get zero. You plug in a one, one squared is one. One tenth times one is one tenth. Okay, what happens over here? You get positive 10, similar to this. You get zero, and you get positive 10. 10 times one squared is 10. And just by plotting these three points in each figure, you're gonna get a sense of what goes on when you have a coefficient. I'll start with this one, because notice that negative one, and at one, my goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right, anyway, let's graph, look at this, Shh, look at this parabola, I guess you could say the arms got really narrow, right, the opposite happens here, you know, at negative one, at one, I mean, it barely, barely, barely raised, so what's going to happen here is, I mean, this won't be narrow, this will be very wide. I mean, just from there to there, look at that parabola. It's like this. It's just stretching out. It's just stretching out. There are these arms are, if you call them two arms, they're getting very wide through there. So that's what happens. Yeah, I guess a, a large coefficient actually pulls it in there. Uh, very, very small coefficient, yeah, number less than one, actually makes it very wide. But notice they didn't shift. We weren't having these shift to the left or shift to the right or shift up and down. That's how coefficients affect these functions. Students always curse about that square root function. And they say, well, what happens if there's a negative on that x? So here's just one example. That square root function? What if you had that? The square root of negative x. Well then. Remember it went like this? It's just going to go like that. Yeah. Actually, this graph is just going to look exactly like that. Negative square root of negative x. So, just for an example, how about y equal to the square root of negative x plus 2. Well, another way to write this is y equal to the square root of 2 minus x. These are the same functions. 
Yeah, that negative's in front of that X. We can see it, so it's going to go like this. But uh, if you want to know where did it shift to, where did it shift to, and then shooting off that direction, just figure out what makes it zero. What X value sub to there makes this expression right here under the radical equal zero? X equal to two, right? Two minus two is zero. It's right here. That's what that graph would do. All right. Last thing. Let's put it all together. Let's put it all together. I'm going to take one of those four common functions. Let's see. Y equal to negative 2 x minus 1 squared. Okay, that indicates which one of the four common functions we're talking about. Plus 3. All right, a lot going on here. We'll put it all together. That didn't shift it, did it? The two, ah, I might have made those two arms of that parabola, you know, just a little bit more narrow. Reflection, right? Reflection on the y-axis. This is the up-down shift, right? Went up three. This is that left-right shift. Remember when it was a minus? Yeah, it actually shifted to the right. Shifted right one unit. This will flip it. Let's make a sketch of that parabola. Okay, it went one unit to the right. And it went up three units. There it is. But don't draw your parabola like this. Right? It flipped over. This graph will just go. There it is. There it is. No graphing calculator required, huh? By the way, I know exactly where it went to on the y-axis. That's actually a future topic. It's called the y-intercept. The five y-intercepts, okay, what you do is you set x equal to zero. Because any value on this y-axis where x equals zero. So if you notice, if I substitute a zero here, zero minus one squared is one. One times negative two is negative two. Negative two plus three is one. That's how I knew exactly where this was crossing the y-axis. But x and y-intercepts is actually a future topic. Right now, we're just talking about rough sketches and transformations. That's it.